ओके गाइस आई एम ऑडिबल ओके एस्टरडे वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डॉकर इंस्ट्रक्शंस राइट या फाइन ओके Okay, so let us assume that this is our architecture. We have one database, and uh, applications are basically scaled, and we have three instances of applications. Let us assume that it can be more also, or it can be less. Now, we have been doing Docker for these many days, right? Let us assume that this is a setup which you have in your office. Okay, this container basically crashes. for some reason this container has crashed okay and there is no way where you can restart it okay but these applications have been storing data to db for well, let us assume it has been running for one week okay if i bring in a new container and put it over here will the data of the one week will be retained no okay so do you think industry will accept it if you don't have this kind of a solution okay and the same thing might happen for app servers also or same thing can happen for any kind of container which you are basically willing to have so we need something called as persistent storage okay a storage which can be persisted on to your network or on to your machine or it can be anywhere okay whatever is there in the container which is important to you not everything we we might not need a complete linux kernel that is that doesn't make any sense okay for example if i am working in jenkins i will be interested in jenkins home directory okay i am working in mysql i'd be interested in the data mysql uh, sql servers data backup because i can restore them okay so depending on your application there might be certain areas which you are interested in taking backup not everything okay so for example even if you take backup of your operating system in windows you would not be taking c windows system 32 folder right okay you will be taking the important places where your application is retaining the data or where you are writing your documents okay no one would be interested in c windows system 32 because installing windows 7 is all about just rebooting your system with a cd or a pen drive that's it okay so they don't worry about operating system aspects but whatever your application is generating that we need to take we might require that so this is first scenario okay container being killed kill or lost but till now whatever we have seen the moment you kill your container you remove your container okay is there any chance that you can get that data back as of now there is no data no way to really get it okay so we want that way that is the first thing even our containers are being removed we still want the data of whatever the container has generated whatever we feel important out of it okay so that is the first thing and let me let me come back and tell you the other architecture diagram so this is the first thing and let me try to show you the other one these are again applications okay and these three applications are doing the same job they are for the for, for the same purpose let us assume that this is your application being scaled so that you can cater to more users okay so the data which this application generates do you want it to be three different stuff or do you want it to be the same stuff okay so let me explain about 
a concept called as load balancing before I go over here. Okay. Oh, not this. Sorry. Okay. So let us assume that I have an application over here. Okay. And mathematically, let us see that this application is capable of catering to 50 users. But my current traffic is 75. So what is the solution now? One thing is you can increase your system's memory and uh, all the all the other uh, attributes which cater to that. Okay. So, but for that there is no end. How many? How much time do you do that? Okay. So, for example, you have done it 50 and the current traffic is 75. One thing is you can increase your system's power. Wonderful. If it becomes 500. If it becomes 500, 50 to 75, okay, makes sense. Just increase 1 GB of RAM and some storage doing, going good. But how about this stuff, if it becomes 500? Does it make any sense to increase the system power, one system power? No. So increasing system power of your machine is called as vertical scaling. Okay. Technically, it is called as vertical scaling. Okay. Now, what I would do is I would bring in other machine okay with the similar setup and now i have two machines to do the job this is called as horizontal scaling okay so generally industry most of the people in industry prefer this approach okay now let us assume that you are a user and this is a flipkart application okay and then let us assume that the domain name over here is one dot flipkart dot com and here it is two dot flipkart dot com okay this is this machine's host name let us assume now what will you give to the user will you give flipkart dot com or you will you ask your user to okay you do one dot flipkart dot dot com we want user to always enter via same approach and whether to go to the first app, first app server or second app server is a decision that should be taken by one of the system within us. So exactly that is the place where your load balancer comes in. Okay. Here we have something called as load balancer. There are many routing techniques, round robin, weighted, route based routing. I'm not getting into all of that. Okay. But as a user, you would be accessing load balancer load balancer now identifies and routes to traffic to one of the servers okay make sense right so this is a typical architecture now let us assume that you have accessed the request and first time your request has gone here okay after some time you you go over again and you try to launch again from the browser www.tripcat.com and your data will be in this machine okay whatever it stores okay and if now if load balancer redirects your request to this app server okay and if it is storing data in this disk will it be available over here no okay if it is transactional related data anyway we have database and mir em konnaru ani telusukovadam easy ne endukante because whatever you have purchased will be stored in db and both of these servers have an access to db so let us assume some logs let us assume some state data which they are maintaining in this machine so how do you ensure that both are same okay so again here there is a need for persistent storage okay now what i would do is i would create a persistent storage let us assume that this is a persistent storage okay and the amount of this will be created on both of these machines. So whether you are writing it from here or here, it would be available to both of the servers. So that's how we maintain state. That this is the same thing when you do whenever you are scaling Jenkins. Jenkins underscore home, whatever directory it is, you would try to put it on a persistent storage, which is shared between multiple containers. Make sense? Now, if I speak of this container world, this persistent storage has to be present on the dock on the machine where you have Docker daemon. On the machine where you have 
Docker D1. Okay, so this is going to be our architecture. There are two needs. One is your container being killed should not loss or should not cause loss of data. And the other thing is when you have multiple applications sharing something, there should there might be a need that multiple containers try to share the same data. And how do you create that? And this aspect of data storage, okay, in Docker is handled by a concept called as volumes. Docker volumes. Okay. A Docker volume can be created in the Docker file. Okay. Or it can be mounted in the Docker file. Or while starting the container itself, you can pass the arguments for that. So that, that is the aspect around the volumes. Okay. Fine. Now let us see one example of volume. Persistent storage means maintaining duplicate data. It is not uh, maintaining the persistent storage is a storage which will be present even after your machine is dead or killed. That's what we call it as uh, persistent storage. If your data is being dead along with your machine, we call it as ephemeral data. Okay. And if you work on the volumes are ephemeral because they die along with your container. Okay. Fine. How many of you have Docker book with you? No one. Okay. Let me show you what this book has. Man. I can't help it guys because it is taking a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Please load. Okay. Okay. So these are the contents of this book. Okay, there is there is loads of information over here. Kubernetes is not covered in this book, but apart from that, all the Docker stuff is covered. Okay, so konukun chadavandan ne anno. At least one of all that is your choice, your way of looking at the things. But only at least try to uh, basically go with at least reading this book once. Okay, fine. So the data volume concept is covered in this book for approximately 10 or 15 pages. So it covers each and every minute detail about Docker, how we used to do earlier when we didn't add volumes, okay? Uh, and and even the traditional approaches are covered over here. So I would expect everyone at least reads this section over, right? Fine. Okay, and it discusses various various aspects of it. 
so how do you, what will happen if you try to put a volume in a docker file and uh, basically how to check the volumes and how you basically do it from uh, command line all of these aspects right and there are docker volume management uh, commands also okay so make sense all right so it speaks about different approaches also so i would i would expect that you you would go through this okay fine so let us go back to our uh, aws Okay, so we are interested in this machine, right? So connect. Okay, let us see what are the images which we have. Docker images. Oh, we don't have Ubuntu, is it? I would be taking Ubuntu image just because it is easy for me to log in and do the other aspects. Okay. It is not that I cannot uh, basically do this in Jenkins image, Tomcat image. You can do all of that. Okay. But I just want an application which doesn't start anything. So that's the reason why I'm taking Ubuntu. So. What is this pull operation? Will it start the container? Okay. So, Docker images, and let me see if I have any containers running. I have. I want to stop that. So, Docker stop. Okay, so now I want to start a container. So docker run, and then I would be using a new command line which is called as minus v, and then I am going to call it as my mount, right? And we want to colon 14.04. Right, and I want to log in into this machine also, so that's the reason why I would do minus it slash bin slash. Let us see what happens. Am I in this container? Okay. Are you seeing anything which which uh, relates to my mount? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now let us assume that I would create something over here. Okay. So touch one dot txt. Okay. So the whole point or whole aspect of this discussion is. You should have this as a persistent storage. When I say persistent storage, it should be present in the container or in your on your machine. 
container lo unnada okay it will be it will be shown as a mount on your container but actually the physical location of it where it is storing the data is on your machine okay shall we find out where it is so i'll keep this container running and i'll take one more session to really find out what is happening okay so i'd be using one of the command which we have seen yesterday okay which is inspect okay docker ps and now let me do docker inspect and the id okay so let us go into the areas which we are interesting are you seeing anything called as volumes now yesterday volumes was empty right but now what is that we are seeing we are seeing something called as my mount okay let us come over to the top okay now it says mount and mount has given as a path okay i would copy this path so where is that i have gone i have gone to mount mounts and in mounts i filed in the field called as source that is what i have taken okay now i would go into cd and the path that has been written over here and let me do ls okay so vi 1.txt hello that is what i have written i have written it from my physical machine okay let me go to the container pardon me i have done it please wait uh, let me finish this yeah please don't interrupt in between yeah hello chinna fine so whether you write it from here or you write it in the physical machine it would be shown to both the places okay so let me create some more files this i am doing it from my physical machine you can see the path this is a path of my physical machine okay so touch two dot txt and i go to container and i do ls so these two are always in sync okay so now if i create a mount point to the folder wherever i, I want for example in case of jenkins i would be creating a home jenkins home directory to whatever mount which i have created so that jenkins will write all of the data to here and actually it is not writing into its storage it is writing onto the physical machine so even though the container is dead you would still have okay your volumes and there is one more thing which you need to look into okay so that is docker volume so are you seeing anything about our volume there is a separate volume management command so docker volume and ls okay so this would give you what is the volumes which you have what are the volumes which you have and you can uh, basically create volumes from here and use that as a mount you can do whatever you want okay so there is a special command which is created which has this sub command docker volume you can do all of this okay so uh, someone had asked me in in a couple of days back what is the prune command okay you can see what is the prune okay docker prune will remove all the unused containers and whereas docker volume prune will remove all the unused volumes that's it that is the container and if you want to remove volumes you can use rs okay shall we do it again shall we do this stuff again okay i'll start it from beginning and i would also show you what different ways of doing it now what is the difficulty which we have ఇప్పుడు మీకు ప్రాక్టికల్ గా డిఫికల్టీ దేంట్లో అనిపించింది టు నో వేర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ప్రజెంట్ ఇన్ ద లోకల్ సిస్టమ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు యూస్ బేసికలీ డాకర్ ఇన్స్పెక్ట్ కమాండ్ ఓకే లెట్ అస్ సీ ఇఫ్ ఐ కెన్ డూ సంథింగ్ ఫర్ దాట్ ఓకే బట్ అట్ దిస్ మూమెంట్ ఐ వుడ్ కిల్ దిస్ కంటైనర్ 
okay docker ps it is not running right now let me do the same command again okay and this time i don't call it my mount uh, let me call it as slash what is it jenkins something like that any any stuff for that matter okay i'm in okay and i would be doing df minus h this will show you me all the mount points now am i seeing it yes does it make sense now yeah now i have this so wait how can what are the two different ways of checking this now okay one is you can use docker volume ls command this will basically tell you the path but from here it is difficult to make out because you need to know what is your volumes id right so or volumes name at least so what is the easiest way docker ps take this and then do docker inspect okay and now try to just scroll a bit up you would see a mount section okay and in mount section you would see this source path oh sorry i have done control c copy and okay and now it doesn't has any any aspects to it so now you can write whatever you want for example uh, what is happening okay so actually we had copied jenkins dot var at some location right what was it ls slash home slash ubuntu what is there as something called as d images shall i copy that so cp minus r slash home slash ubuntu and d images to here okay and now i would get back into the container okay so cd slash jenkins and i do ls so that's that's a whole concept around it but the one thing which i don't like out of this is the volumes which i create i need to go with docker inspect and try to find out where it is and then i have to work it out over there which is practically difficult for everyone so let us try the alternative approach so what i would do is let me exit out of this okay now i would be doing slash home slash ubuntu slash d images colon jenkins okay so what do you think is the first part source it is it is a folder in my machine and the next i am mapping folder in my machine to container so let us see whether it works out or not okay now again i will be doing df minus h i am using jenkins right now i would get into cd am i getting it and now this will not create much of a difficulty because here the storage is at the place which you want for example if you want volume to be present at the place wherever you want you would be giving minus v and then you would be giving your source machine storage path colon your containers mount point make sense now right so this is this is more readable right and you can you can do now with this you can check that with docker okay take this id and then 
do docker inspect oh let me do it this way man docker inspect okay mount points that is an Are you seeing it now? Previously, we used to get a source which is basically present in the Jenkins or Docker's installation path. Now, what is that we are getting? We are getting the path folders where we want. That is the source, and this is the destination's name. Okay, and and uh, if you want, you can make it read only mount only. You can do that one also. You can just make it read only so that the container doesn't write anything. It just reads the data. That can be done. Okay. So now, now does it make sense? Now, can we have a storage point which is persistent now? Okay, so the only thing which your application architectures have to really worry about is writing the data to whatever mount which you have put, and we can mount the data into existing folders also. For example, you can have all of your uh, var temp in this mount, okay, or var logs some folder in this mount. So you can do that kind of mounting itself. Now, is the problem solved now with respect to the loss of data? Yes. So now, do we have ephemeral or a persistent storage now? Persistent storage. Okay. So that's that's the whole point. That's a key idea behind this. Okay. So one thing. Okay. And Docker volumes can be removed or created by using Docker volume command. Okay. You can control using this. You can create, inspect. Okay. Ls prune remove all of that. Okay, so any any images which are not in uh, use will be removed. So Docker volume room. Okay, now Docker volume ls. Did it remove anything? No right, okay. You remove the container from Docker ps minus a also. Use Docker rm and then remove the container and try to execute the same command. So whatever volume was created which is associated with the container will be removed. Okay. Even if it is present in a stopped state, but if it is present in your Docker ps minus a, those volumes will not be removed. Okay. That's how it works. Okay. Fine. Now let me come back to my. Okay. CD D images, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you see, I have something called as Docker file over here, VI <coughs> Docker file, and if I have to make this Jenkins. So that all the Jenkins home will look at the same directory. So what is that I would do? Jenkins home is an environment variable. So I would say that env Jenkins underscore home is slash Jenkins, right? Okay. And now what is that I have done? I have created an environment variable where Jenkins underscore home is mapped to certain volume. And here you can create something called as volume and write slash Jenkins. Okay. So basically what is that you are creating? You are creating a mount which is called as Jenkins which will be stored 
basically as a persistent storage. Now all of your Jenkins home is stored in slash Jenkins and slash Jenkins is a mount. So you can use the same mount to be shared between multiple containers. This is the ideal way of writing. Whenever you want to really create an application, you would be writing a volume statement over there and we would be writing slash Jenkins. Okay. And for example, if there is an environment variable, it makes sense. If there, is, if there is no environment variable, then you need to configure some in some way that it would try to go over there. For example, if you want all of your logs to be stored in some mount point, then you are log reading just then. You are doing log monitoring. Okay. You don't want to monitor on your container. It, it eats up your container spaces and you can't install software on containers. So basically what we do is, we create a mount for logs and all of the logs would be putting it on a persistent storage and the logs from your physical machine will be read by a log monitoring tool like Splunk or Elastic Elk Stack or whatever it is. Okay, So that's how we try to get over the things. So now for the people who know Jenkins, will this help? Jenkins already HTML, Jenkins underscore home directory and TNT in Windows it is C drive users whatever your username and then you should have something called as dot jenkins folder but let let us let me show you one thing cmd what is my jenkins home c colon jenkins so generally jenkins will try try to store the data over here but what is that i have changed i have changed my environment variable to jenkins c colon jenkins are you seeing c colon jenkins folder and all of the data related to Jenkins is stored over here. So environment variable makes or adds a value. So that's the same logic which I have used over there. Okay, you can change your locations where Jenkins store data. Okay. So now if I do this, okay, it absolutely makes more sense and you can mount this volume to multiple Jenkins machines. And even if you have 100 Jenkins machines, they would be showing the same status. Okay, but does it make sense? Sometimes no, sometimes yes. Okay, it depends on your how you want to deploy your application. I'm not saying that this is a solution for everything. This might be a solution for some of the things, right? Especially logs. Logs is the only data which is very important these days with microservices coming into play. Okay, and sometimes some stateful applications. If you remembered when we started Docker discussion, we have been telling about stateful and stateless applications. When your application is stateless, that means that it doesn't store anything on the container. It stores everything in the database. So those kind of applications, there is no need for volume. Okay, but there is other kind of applications where it stores some data in the in the physical system, and you want that data out. So for that, we use volumes. Okay, stateless ki stateful gaye the stateful ka application ko chhanda pane extra jayala nam. Guto na when when I started my classes, there was a first slide which showed. What kind of applications can you contain rise? Stateless or stateful? Stateless is simple, you don't need to change anything in Japan. What is the reason? Because it doesn't store anything. It stores in the database. And database anyway, we would have it. Okay. And if it is stateful, you need to do this volume. Okay. So there is one more kind of a volume, okay, which is called as uh, basically containers having something called as data only volume. Containers have something called as data only volume so i would create a container which is only for volume okay that was the earlier approach not not now we don't use it right now but that approach i would basically discuss tomorrow once i once you are comfortable with these comments endukante adu ippudu vaadam kaani telusundal interview lo adagochu if you claim that you have been working in docker for years for at least more than 2 years then you might expect those type of questions or if you get into a decent companies where uh, people have been working in Docker for many years, you might get that question. Okay, whenever you are, whenever you are interviewed by a person who has been working in Docker for years, right? He might ask you this. Okay, now you have Docker volume command, but before we never used to have this. Yes, that is all fact. So he might ask some of the things. So that's for that reason we will be covering something called as data only or volume only containers tomorrow. Make sense? Are we clear till this point? Do we have any doubt now? Okay. Now will containers store data? Can we can we retrieve data out of containers? Can we sync data from our physical machine to multiple containers? Yes. Okay. So one last question before I uh, move on to something else. Okay. 
how can I achieve this? Two applications sharing same storage. Okay. So I write two commands. You just tell me whether it is it is same or not. So Docker run minus v slash home Ubuntu d images. Okay. Ubuntu colon 14.04. Okay. Then I come on to the other terminal. Okay. Fine. And I want to get into this machine, right? So if I want to get into this machine, what is that I need to write? And Okay, so cd slash oh my command is wrong. Sorry for that. Colon slash Jenkins, right? Now cd slash Jenkins. I do ls. Okay, this is one kind. I am in one container. Okay, I am doing touch one dot txt. Let me get into this container and let me do ls. Now, are these two containers sharing the same folder? Okay, whatever the other container is created, is this container getting the data? Okay, now this container writes Oh, sorry guys, this this network speed is slow and I'm, and I'm getting extra key presses. Okay, now what is the content? Hello world. I go to the other stuff and do the same activity. Is the data in sync? between two containers which are running but still are we able to give the same storage space yes so this is this is the other feature these are the two major activities of docker volume one is creating a persistent storage so that you don't lose the data and the next thing is you need to set up volumes in such a way that more than one container tries to see use the same folder they might be mounted on a different point that's okay that is that is you can change it but whatever mount point which you create, the things written on, on a physical system or one of the container will be reflected at all the places. Okay, make sense now? So where is this situation solved? Where is that image? Now can I have two apps, one dot flipkart.com and two dot flipkart.com? Okay, having some part of storage being shared where they try to have the same common storage. Okay, but for the container it would look as if it is a new mount. Okay, but actually you are storing the data on your physical or virtual machine where you have Docker daemon installed. Right? Are we clear? Yes. Any questions you can ask me on this now before we move on to the next topic. Yes, you had some question. Yes, existing. Slightly uh, challenging approach. There are some workarounds, but directly if you aren't if you ask me, I'd, I'd say no. You have to use uh, Linux's traditional way of finding the storage for that. Okay. And the answer is straight away if you want to do it, no. Okay. If you want to take workarounds and can you achieve that? Probably yes. Yeah. So that's that's how it is. Volumes and ports. Okay. But but from one dot from the recent version they have been telling that they have been working on this. Attaching they have written a new driver now. Okay, and uh, basically what Docker claims is you can do that if you use these storage drivers. Okay, so let me just look into that storage drivers and uh, just tell me. But as of 1 1.19, 1 1.110, it was not possible. Okay, 1.11, it was not consistent. 1.12, there were a lot of changes. So let me look at that storage driver which they are asking at, 
and for that I think you need to install one more storage driver to make that happen. Okay, I would have come come back with that, but directly answer is no. You have to use these kind of approaches to really get it through. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So. Will the first container will be able to see the files of the second container? Whatever has been mounted, yes. Okay. While mounting, there are only two permissions: read, write, and read. Okay. So those are the only two permissions which you give to your containers. So will your container will have read, write capabilities or just read capabilities? That's it. It it has not been complicated yet. So you don't have users over there. Container can write or can read. These are the only two things which we have. Yeah. That's the thing which you see in inspect saying that we that read write mode true. By default, it is read write enabled. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. You can create as many as you want. Yes. Yes. So, for example, whatever volumes which you are creating, per, even though we call it as a persistent storage, it is nothing but a folder on your system. So back up that data. That's it. Antega da. Data me physical machine ko chhinda rata. Me volume ropon lona backup chhiye na osan lega. You have that. You, the whole necessity is you want that data. And whatever data you have backup, you can bring it back to your machine and you can create a mount with that on a new container. So that's why it makes sense. Yeah. So can you work on a Red Hat image as few commands seems to be different? Okay. Uh, Red Hat image is what you want me to work. Okay, basically what I would do is, Srinivas, tomorrow we would be doing Docker on Red Hat. Yeah? So I don't see much of a differences, but the only thing is your shell might not work. The get docker.sh might not work. That's fine. Okay. My mount is the same file or replica created on a different. My mount is a replica that has been created between, okay, your machine and uh, the container. But whatever you write on that mount will be written over here. But it is not a direct relation. There is there is a storage driver concept in between that. And the idea folder in this case, like a bit net, any bit, then direct can be scenario. So there is there is a storage driver which comes into play where they try to write over there. Okay. But you can assume that it is the same driver which here, which same folder which they are working on. Okay. But internally it is not exactly the same. It tries to use uh, some driver concepts to get it through. Okay. So, yeah, we have ten minutes of time, and I, I'm not sure whether I would be able to at least introduce to the concept of networking. Can store it? Sandbox. Okay. It it is nothing but a file system which is the basic file system with mounted with formatted in the EXT based uh, stuff on a Linux machines. Okay, so whatever is EXT driven, you can use that. That's a, that's the whole point. It is. Pardon me. Ah uh, no, it depends on where you have mounted it from. For example, I am doing it from my laptop. I am doing it from my Amazon machine. Uh, in in my case, currently I am using a volume called as EBS volume of Amazon. So it is it, it doesn't basically look at it that way. What it tries to create in volume is your physical operating system, right? If it is a Linux, any file system which Linux can read, you can mount it. If I am working on a Windows, I 